Hi, welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today you might notice that I'm going to be a little bit rusty. It's actually been two months since we shot a Tech Tips. I know we released one a week ago, but we shot that over two months ago. So, we have two things to show you today. One is this really cool lizard hat that I got from some street vendor. It's covering up my hair today, which is even worse. And we've also got the Acer Aspire Timeline series of notebooks to show you. Now we've only got one. We've got the 13.3 inch, but honestly I feel this is the most interesting one because of a couple of different things. First of all, the form factor. It's absurdly small and we'll do, we'll do lots of close-ups later so we can show you that as well. But it runs for over eight hours and that's without an Atom processor. So this actually uses an Intel Pentium CULV chip. So that's a 1.3 gigahertz processor that consumes only 10 watts of power. It also uses their latest chipset which means you've got three gigs of DDR3 memory also keeping power consumption down and speed up. So stay tuned, we're gonna show you more about this exciting new notebook. So we're gonna do a quick size comparison with the, uh, the Timeline 13.3 inch model. We've got kind of your typical run of the mill 15 inch notebook here. This is actually a four by three notebook rather than a widescreen one. And then on my left, I have my weapon of mass destruction, my work notebook, which is a 17 inch desktop replacement notebook. So we're gonna stack these babies up and show you kind of the difference in size that you're looking at toting around here. So there's your 13.3. Okay, there's your 15 inch, and then under that you've got the 17 inch notebook. Now, it doesn't look as impressive that way, but when you look at the side profiles, you can see just how thin this thing is. It's actually on the level of the MacBook Air, it just doesn't really look like it because of the way the lines are shaped. The MacBook Air tapers, whereas the Acer Aspire timeline does not, but it's a really thin, really light notebook. Very impressive. Okay, so let's talk about the build quality of this thing because, and I don't think I've talked nearly enough about the price. This thing's like $6.99 Canadian street. So it's a phenomenal value for the price considering you are not getting an Intel Atom based platform. So you've got a lot more refinement than you'd see in a typical netbook. You've got like a silver finish on the top, which is really nice. You don't have those bulky battery packs like you'd see typically on a netbook. You've got sort of a more slick looking design where it doesn't stick out on the bottom or stick out on the back. Um, even though you are getting eight plus hours of battery life out of it. Now let's talk about the ports a little bit. You've got a Kensington port, gigabit ethernet. Now HDMI out on a notebook at this price point with this sort of size is pretty much unheard of. It's a benefit of the new Intel chipset that it's using. You've got a couple USB ports and an SD port. Then on the other side, moving it around, we've got a little orange LED that tells us it's on. Very nice. Then you've got a headphone jack, a microphone jack, another USB port, and a VGA out port. And then this is obviously our power plug. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the screen and keyboard, which is so often the make or break factor when purchasing a notebook. You are not going to believe how many shots it's taken us to get this conclusion shot. Now, I'm gonna make this work this time. All right, so opening up the timeline, you're gonna really enjoy a lot of the UI enhancements they've made for such an inexpensive notebook. First of all, you've got a chiclet style keyboard. Now, it does have a multilingual layout, which some people won't like, but all that means is basically a shortened shift key on this side and a shortened enter key on that side. It's not our favorite, but it is quite a bit bigger and easier to use than a netbook, so we were willing to deal with that compromise because really this form factor is aimed squarely at netbook upgraders, both in terms of price and in terms of feature set. Now, you compromise a DVD drive, but you do still have wireless end, so you can pull big files over your network that way, and it's just such a pleasure to use because it's so small and so light you can take it with you anywhere, much like a netbook. Now, on the subject of it being really small, I want to have a look at the screen because that's one of the first things you're going to notice after you open it after you see the eight plus hours go all day sticker. Now I was looking for the bonus package in the box, but that wasn't there. I got over it. I guess they meant use your computer for eight hours all day. So that's okay. But anyway, the LED backlit screen is probably one of the first things that's gonna catch your eye because it's just beautiful. When you use LEDs for the backlight, you don't get any of those hot spots like backlight bleeding. And the reason they had to use LED backlighting is because 
you can't put a cathode behind a screen this thin. Now, the last thing that we thought was really exceptional about this notebook, besides the multi-touch, see, can you see why this is hard? Is the fact that it runs exceptionally quietly. That's again due to the ultra low voltage chip in here. I actually couldn't hear the fan in the office putting my ear next to it. I can hear it a little bit now. It's been on for a while, but it's really, really quiet, especially for like a little whiny notebook fan. So I hope you enjoyed the Aspire timeline as much as we did. Thank you for watching NCIX Tech Tips.